everybody welcome hey brokers hope you're having a wonderful wealthy winning Wednesday welcome please let us know where you're joining us from all right we have a great agenda lined up for you today today is module 8 which is all about agent retention we're gonna go over some numbers we're gonna talk about the culture and teamwork also what agents want and giving them that accountability not just to the ability to make money but following up with their goals making sure that they are producing at the level that the, that they want to produce it and that you need them to produce that so we got some great stuff for you today I also have a preview of KDNA which is um, knowledge DNA it's a great little online tracking program so um, welcome everybody thanks for joining us this awesome Wednesday wealthy winning Wednesday morning we're gonna go ahead and get the slide presentation up Okay, there we go. Recruit and retain top talent. It's a little bit of a tongue twister, but lots of fun to talk about. This is our baseball theme. Scout, sign, and play the right agents at your brokerage firm. And this is module eight. All right, so who's ready to get started? Welcome. Thank you, brokerage owners, for taking time out of your busy schedule to take off your real estate sales hat and put on your brokerage owner manager hat today is all about running the business at a high level you've screened agents you've recruited them you've hired them you've interviewed them you've done all that great stuff now how do you keep them there at your company we all know that it's much easier to recruit um, I'm sorry to keep existing customers which in this case agents are customers than it is to try to get new ones that's our acquisition cost right so our retention rate and acquisition rate will also be going over the churn rate and a few other things so today we're not just going to play the game we're going to change it and hit it out of the ballpark right Woohoo! who is ready MBA broker consultants bringing you world-class training for brokerage owners from a business viewpoint rather than an agent viewpoint so we're talking about operating your business and putting your plan of attack into action okay so in this 10 module series we've gone over uh, a winning team culture compensation package value farm team and training marketing maverick and then we started with marketing recruiting onboarding production and now we're at agent retention so that is today module eight welcome I'll be your instructor for today and I am Regina Brown okay so our training today we have four topics one is the attrition and churn rate which we'll hear all about we'll get to calculate some numbers this will be fun secondly we will track and measure our agents goals using an app and then we'll talk about how to fulfill our customer demands and lastly how to support them to keep them productive engaged and excited about working with your company so we have an activity worksheet for you today it is module 8 worksheet all right so I just shared the module 8 worksheet please let me know if you're able to download that take a look at it add it to your um, add it to your workbook for this entire series package all right let's keep going here all right number one attrition and churn rate what is that so that is our first poll we're not gonna be able to put polls up today so you can just go ahead and type your answer into the message bar there so what is attrition now some of you may have heard this word already some may have heard it and confused it with something else some may not know what it is so just give it your best guess and remember um, the uh, 
we'll, we're going to talk about what it is. And you probably have an idea, but cuss is attrition, customers leaving your company. That's A. Is it B, giving credit to the author, or C, people being attracted to your company? Well, I think you know by now <laughs> we're talking about A, customers leaving your co company. Now, in this case, customers are our agents. Those are our customers. When we talk about giving credit to the author, that's attribution, not attrition. And we talk about people being attracted to your company, right? That's attraction, not attrition. So we, we just try to mix it up um, and have a little fun today. So go ahead and type into the chat. Let us know any questions you have about the attrition rate. Now, what is the churn rate? Your churn rate is the amount of customers or subscribers who cut ties with your service or company during a time period. And that's according to the website churn-rate.com. As defined by Wikipedia, churn rate is one of two primary factors that determine the steady state level of customers a business will support. In business operations, a churn rate is known as a growth decelerator. As compared to, on the other hand, a growth accelerator that causes your company to grow, the churn rate is what causes your company to decrease and not grow larger. As a matter of fact, it causes your company to have to cut back because your production is lower, your sales are lower, your um, Profit is lower, your revenue is lower if you have a high churn rate. So your goal is to have as low of a churn rate as possible. There will always be a churn rate. It's just a matter of how high or how low it is. All right, so we have butter churning. This is where the word churn comes from because in the olden times, they would have this uh, wooden barrel and they would put milk in it, and then they would put, uh, you know, like a little agitator, and somebody would have to sit there and, and move the agitator and stir up the ingredients, and what happens when the butter is being churned is that the fat particles are going to separate from the liquid, and then the fat particles are going to sort of clump together, and then that's the cream, which we can scoop off the top known as butter when it all clumps together. So that was how an old fashioned churning barrel worked. Now, of course, it's not done like that anymore unless, you know, maybe you live out in the country. Um, this is sort of an old fashioned method, but that's what the churn is. Churn is about separation. It's about separating. You know, in a butter, we could say it's separating the cream from the the liquid or from the milk. In a business, churn is all about turnover, right? How fast are those agents turning over and leaving your company? So we have a few little calculations we're going to do here. The first is going to be our churn rate, and then we'll talk about some more calculations. Now we know we have our business owner, business manager hat on, and we know that we're running the business from a high level. We're looking down at the overall big picture, and to do that, we need to have numbers. We need to crunch numbers, and then we need to be able to have something to compare it to, right? So if we compare it to what's happening in the industry, that's known as a benchmark. If we compare it to our previous statistics, then we could be comparing it to our own internal data and we can recognize trends. We can do, for example, year over year, quarter over quarter, month over month, and the churn rate will tell us what percentage of customers, in this case our agents, are leaving our company. That's the opposite of the retention rate. In the retention rate, we find out what percentage of customers or agents are staying at the company. So it's sort of the inverse, right? 
the churn rate is customers leaving, retention is the customers who are staying. Now there's a couple other things that we can compare that with. One is the acquisition rate, and those are the agents that are coming onto the company. So that would be um, sort of the opposite of the churn rate. Churn rate says how many are leaving, acquisition rate is how many are coming on. So let's think about it for a minute. Say our churn rate is 5%. 5% of our agents are leaving the company on a consistent basis, whatever time period we used to measure that. On the other hand, our acquisition rate is 10%. So woohoo, yay, isn't that awesome? Our rate of agents coming into the business, joining our company, is higher than our churn rate. So in this case, this example that we just mentioned, the churn rate is 5%, whereas the acquisition rate is 10%. So the net is at 5%. We have a 5% net growth of agents coming in, which is great. Now, what if it's on the opposite way? Our churn rate is, say it's 15% of agents leaving, and our acquisition rate is, we'll say, 8%, while the net is only 7%, and the net is a negative, right? Because our customers, agents, are leaving faster than they're being acquired. And that's not good news for the company at all, especially if that is a long-term rate. So that is those three rates. There's another rate. We didn't talk about it, but we, we certainly could have, and that is the recruitment rate, and that's something that you're going to need to track as well. And recruitment is your lead generation going through the process. So for example, you start off with 30 agents you're targeting. Of those, how many um, responded back to you as being possibly interested? How many of those I mean, of course, you would set up appointments. How many came to their, showed up for their appointment, their interview? Of those, how many actually um, committed to joining your company? And then how many actually did? So there's a few different um, increments that allows you to measure at each milestone there. And you could actually find out how successful your recruitment rate is. So say, for example, you started with, you know, 30 agents you're targeting, three months later you've hired three of them, so over the three month period that would be considered a 10% recruitment rate. Okay, I hope all these um, numbers make sense and you can see how they can be used in your business. The most important thing is to calculate metrics, understand them, qualify the metrics, and then Use the metric to build your business and drive revenue growth. And that is a quote from the website ProfitWell about um, calculating the churn rate and using the metrics to measure your business. All right, so now let's do a little calculation here. Who's ready for a little math? Don't worry, it'll be super simple. All right, so our data strategy. You can see on the slide on the left here, the total number of agents who left during the period, we start with that number, and we divide that by the total number of agents at the beginning of the period, and that equals our churn rate. Okay, so let's look at this example on the right. We had four agents that left the brokerage. And at the beginning of that period, say it was, you know, a quarter, we had 68 total agents. So 68 minus, I mean, 4 divided by 68 is a 5.9% churn rate. So that is not good news that agents are leaving. On the other hand, hopefully they are being replaced with great agents, and that would be your acquisition rate. And hopefully your acquisition rate is higher than your churn rate. But the important thing is to know what those numbers are, look at the trend, or is the rate going up or down? The churn rate, you want that to go down, whereas the retention rate, you want that to go up. 
and the acquisition rate. You want the, that to go up as well. So whether you ma measure quarterly, monthly, or annually, now the more frequently the, that you measure it, the closer you'll be able to keep an eye on it and understand the purpose of the churn rate, right? So the churn rate measures a company's overall financial health. It tells you how you're doing and where you're going to be in the long term. It's important to understand the agent retention per period. And if the retention rate is not as high as you like and the churn rate is high, you want to identify what's going on, what changes or why are agents leaving. Now we'll be talking about um, that in module 10 about agents leaving and about you, um, you know, asking them to leave um, and also doing uh, some surveys, exit interviews, finding out what's going on. But it's important to have a handle on that and at least understand. Another thing that churn rate helps you do is to calculate LTV which does not stand for loan to value in this case, it stands for customer lifetime value. And by doing that, you're going to understand which agents stayed with your company the longest, which have been the most productive. And then you're going to know these agents are the most successful at my brokerage. So this is a best fit. These are the right agents. And now I need to go get more agents just like this. Now, as an example, um, my friend, who you probably know him, Rob Aubrey, he really, really focuses on mid producing agents. He doesn't go for, he, you know, the top producers, um, uh, because it might be more work for him. He doesn't actually target newbies because again, that's a lot of work. So he prefers those mid range agents who are mid producers steady producers not big but he knows they're going to be steady those are the most successful fit at his brokerage and so when he goes out and does recruiting those are the agents he targets because he knows that with the way his brokerage is set up those are the best fit for his business model okay so the churn rate also allows us to forecast brokerage performance in the short term and in the long term and anticipate profitability. Okay, so now we, we talked about LTV, lifetime value. Now let's dive into that a little bit. So the lifetime value takes the acquisition cost of finding and hiring new agents, which is the acquisition rate, how much they contribute to the brokerage, which is their contribution amount. We talked about that last week in, in the agent productivity and how long they stay at your company. That's the retention rate. So these are all factors that contribute to the lifetime value of the agent. Now let's say, we're just gonna throw out some hypothetical numbers here. So let's say for example, you determine that an agent would contribute lifetime value of $100,000 in net commissions to your brokerage, right? So, or let's just use that for an example. That might be a big number considering the high churn rate in our business, but let's start off there. Okay. So the life, so we'll say an agent comes onto your company and there was an acquisition rate or an acquisition cost. So what was the cost of bringing the agent in? So let's say, for example, you spend $2,000 as your acquisition cost to bring a new agent in. And then you look at their contribution. Maybe their contribution is $5,000 a month. And then you look at, you know, how long they, you plan to keep them there. We'll say 20 months in this case, or 21 months. And then they could leave the company after that. And so that would be their lifetime value. I hope that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions, go ahead and type it into the chat there. But I hope I explained that well. In other words, how much is each customer worth to your company based on how much money they make 
how long they stay there and you know subtract and of course how much it costs to bring them in in the first place now at our companies we're as a brokerage we're not looking at customer as the buyers and sellers we're looking at our agents because those are the ones that go out and bring in our buyers and sellers so they are our primary customers now it, you might be a little discouraged thinking oh agents are leaving my company what am I gonna do but just remember people will always leave many times it has nothing to do with you that's just human nature people will always leave that's called attrition people will leave because they're they're moving out of the area or they're getting divorced or they, they want to go back to school or they start a new full-time job or you know unfortunately people do pass away and um, or different things happen in different life events so people will always leave it's natural it's going to happen your goal is to find out how you can influence and minimize the rate at which they leave in other words take the churn rate and bring it from a high number down to a lower number hope that makes sense to everybody okay now we get to get into a fun part track and measure our agent goals what app do you use to measure agent goals I have two of my favorites here and then you can type in something else that you use so more GCI from John Masillo, Johnny Mo. I know he is currently bolstering up his program and making it even better and more powerful. We have KDNA, which we're going to give a demo of, also known as Knowledge DNA, which is a great tool for agents. And then we have a franchise tool, and that is just a generic term for anybody who works at a franchise. You may have some type of tracking mechanism in place already. Okay, so KDNA is Knowledge DNA Goal Tracker, and the website is kdna.com. Now you can see I have a little example here, and this was a study that was done. And you can see that was some agents um, had no written goal set, no accountability system, no tracking, no KDNA service and their average was 64,000 in gross commission for the year. And then compare that to an agent who went through the process of setting their goals, putting it in the computer, following up and having their brokerage owner or manager follow up with them with accountability with these tools and it skyrocketed to 147,000 per year. So that was the study done by KDNA. Now we all know these statistics. NAR says that 87% of agents fail after five years. Now this is from a KDNA presentation. So all the screens I'm going to show you in this section are from the KDNA presentation, which you can see online at their site as well. Right? So we have new agents 100%. After one year, it's down to, you know, a little over 30%. And then after five years, you can see it's down to less than 20%. So it's a little discouraging as a broker owner if you're bringing on new agents and you're, you're pouring into them your time, your effort, your money, you know, your sleepless nights of staying up late helping these agents. And then they drop out of the business and you really never got, you know, were able to help them be successful or got your um, time and effort rewarded that you put into them. So how do we change that around? Now this is an online system. You can see this is a screenshot from KDNA. You can say, see that they do a few different things here and these are some sample agents over on the left and for each week um, it goes over what their averages are, their totals, um, and these are different numbers that are being tracked on their scoreboard right so they have things like how many calls did they make how many listing appointments did they go on how many listings did they take how many closings did they have and this brings into mind 
two different types of indicators. Oh. Okay, Violet, I see your message that you can't hear me. I am showing that my microphone is on. I just turned it off and back on again. And it might be something on your end. Um, everything shows my microphone is on here. So um, hopefully um, you can hear me. If not, turn it off, come back in again, and let me know. Okay? Might have to listen to the replay. <laughs> But hopefully the internet's working and it, it's all on as it shows here. Uh, my microphone shows that it's on. Everything's plugged in here. All right, so we're talking about two different types of indicators. The first is a leading indicator and the second is a lagging indicator. They're both L words. It can be a little confusing, but we know that leading is something that happens in advance of an event, right? It's leading and lagging happens after the event. So let's look at our economy. What happens in our economy is that, you know, we had a recession 10 plus years ago, and there were certain events that led up to that recession. Most people did not understand them or realize what the signs were and the clues until after it happened and then they looked back and said, oh, here's what happened. Okay, so a leading indicator tells you in advance, whereas a lagging indicator tells you after the fact. And we call that 2020 hindsight, if only I would have known I could have done something. So when we're looking at our agent production, we want to look at leading indicators, in other words, what they're doing in advance instead of lagging what happens after it. So let's take a little closer look at that. So a lagging indicator. This is what happens after. So you look at an agent, their performance is horrible and their production has gone down. And how do you know that? You know that because they have taken fewer appointments. They have written fewer contracts, listing contracts. They have written fewer offers. They have fewer transactions that have been opened. These are things that happen after the fact, but what came before it that preceded all of these things happening? And that was the leading indicators. And as a brokerage, it's good to have those lagging indicators, but we need to be focused on what comes first that led to those activities or those indicators. So the leading acti indicators are how many, the number of days that the agent time blocked and prepped, the number of hours they were lead generating, the number of conversions they had, the number of open houses, and the activity that they did to get to the appointments, the listing agreements, the buyers, the, you know, the, the transactions, the closings. So before that happened, what did they do to get there? And that's really what we want to focus on to make our agents successful. We call that IPA, right? No, it's not a special kind of beer. IPA stands for income producing activities. What are your agents doing to get there? All right, let's look at leading versus lagging goals here. This is a typical schedule for the, the agent and say they have on their goal sheet the number of days that they're updating their goals and their progress, the number of days that they do the mindset in the morning and business prep, number of hours that they lead generate, the number of two-way conversations, that's where they actually get a hold of somebody and have a conversation with that person, and the number of one-way contacts. In other words, how many messages did they send out? How many social media um, reaches did they have? How many text messages did they um, send? And those are the leading indicators. Those are the activities that happen first. On the other hand, we have the lagging indicators and that's what happens after they do their leading things, their activities. So how many appointments set were set? How many appointments were held? How many buyer agreements were signed? How many 
listing agreements were signed. And those are all results of the cause, and the cause are the leading indicators. Okay, I hope that makes sense with the indicators. Can everybody hear me? Please let us know. Make sure that you can hear us. Now let's look at the agent conversion ratios. For We're going to look at, at three different levels of agents. I'll put my little whiteboard on here. And all right, so we got our three different areas of agents. We have our expert agents. Those are maybe our top producers. We have our average uh, seasoned agents, and then we have our newbie agents, which are not producing very high. So say, for example, they have the number of days that they spend in the morning with mindset and business prep. So it's they do that five days a week. They all do it five days a week. But an expert spends fewer hours of lead generating. They spend, say, 15 hours per week the average agent spends 30 and the new agent will spend 45. Why is that? Because the expert is the expert. That is a person who has a very robust Rolodex of contacts. They get a lot of business by referral, repeat clients. They don't need to spend as much time lead generating. On the other hand, the brand new agent, right? They don't have a very big sphere of influence. They haven't built their credibility and their reputation and they need to spend more time lead generating. It's the same thing with the two-way conversations, right? The expert spends maybe 80 hours a week and the new agent spends maybe 240. Okay, this is not hours per week. <laughs> Oh, okay. I said this was hours per week. This is actually, I forgot, this is actually to get to a closing, right? So it's all for one closing, one closing here. So to get to that one closing, the expert agent had to have 80 hours of two-way conversations, 15 hours of lead generating, whereas a newbie agent had 240 hours of two-way conversations and 45 hours of lead generating. And you can see the same thing applies to the one-way contacts, the buyer appointments, the seller listing appointments, the listing agreements signed, right? So, um, and you can add or subtract depending on the experience and the market. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And by the way, all of this is automatically calculated for you in the um, KDNA system. So this is sort of a sneak peek of what goes on behind the scenes there. So how many hours did they spend lead generating in this system? You can see the little red box here. Actual was 12 and the goal was 8. So this agent exceeded their goals that they wanted to lead generate. Now what happens if they fall short of their goal? You can see right underneath it, two-way conversations was zero and the goal was 60. So their percentage completion was zero and that's in red. So the different colors show how well they're doing and how they're exceeding their goals. Again, this is on the mobile phone looking at it. We could see the lead generation was at 150%. Woohoo! But the two-way conversations were at 0%. You can see the hours of script practicing, adding people to the database, um, morning mindset and business prep was complete at 40%. This gives your agents the ability to hone in on exactly what they're doing and what they need to do. And on the brokerage side, this gives you the ability to look at them and say, okay, here's who's performing well, here's not, because it's color coded. Okay, Shukita, I see your um, yes comment in there. Okay, great. Glad you can hear. Hope everybody's downloaded the worksheet. Okay, so let's just take a big picture look at this um, screen. Agent successes and challenges. So you are the brokerage owner or manager. You're going in and you're looking to see number of buyer appointments held. 
you can see what each agent's performance was and those who are succeeding because of it. So again, the blue exceeded their expect exceeded their goals. Green is they met their goals. Yellow is did not meet them and red is no performance, did not even attempt to meet their goals. So red is not good. So it's all color coded for their for you your ease. You can see all of the agents at once on one screen and monitor their performance. It all comes down to monitoring and follow up, right? So you can see here, this is the end result, percentage of goals, dollar amount of income, and you can see the green bar are those agents who are being tracked and they perceive they, um, okay, their goals went up. You can see 80,000 and oh, percentage wise. Okay, this is not really a good chart. <laughs> okay, percentage wise, their goals went up maybe close to a little bit less than half of those not being tracked and their income more than doubled. Okay, I'm not sure what number that's supposed to be because the goal is a percentage. But anyway, you get the gist. This is a great program because you have to have that accountability and follow up. The bottom line is you want to focus on activities that add to the bottom line for the agent, which is their profitability, those lagging indicators, but you don't focus on those. You focus on what came before to get to those. Okay. I hope that's making sense for everybody. Now let's talk about customer demands. Who are our customers? The agents. What is most important to agents? Go ahead and type in A, B, or C. A is regular steady closings and income. B is lead generation. And C is health insurance. Which one of these three do you think is most important to your agents? Go ahead and let us know what you think there. Okay, Shakiri said all of the above. Yes, I agree. But you can't have health insurance unless you have regular steady closings and income. And you can't have that unless you have lead, lead generation, right? So it's which came first, the cart or the horse? Okay, and you're going to choose A. Okay, I agree with you. I think A is probably the biggest pain point for agents, lack of a regular steady closings and income. And that's why so many are part-time real estate agents because they don't have that ability to generate regular steady closings and they have to have another job somewhere else to provide that regular income, make sure their bills are paid over every month and have that health insurance for themselves and their families. So what do agents want? We have a few things here. Commission splits and fees that always comes to the top of the list although I don't believe it is the sole indicator. Tech tools included. Now we've been talking about this in our previous modules. Tech tools are great, but tech tools are not what agents want. They want the results that come from the tech tools. Same thing with the lead generation and systems. If you say, oh, we're generating leads for you. Well, that's not as important as saying we can put make sure that you have an extra $10,000 in your pocket this year, or we can put you in front of 10 sellers per month, or you can close an extra five transactions this quarter using our systems. So it's about the results, right? Culture mindset. That's so critical. And that's why we spent all of module number one on the culture. It might not be why agents join, but it'll definitely be, why they leave if you don't have the culture that um, will keep them there. Education and training, we'll go over those in, next. Corporate accounts, right? We've mentioned about having the brokerage drive the train of revenue instead of depending on the agents to do that. Most of them are not in a position to do big picture things and that's up to the brokerage to establish. 
So of the things agents seek, which rank the highest? Now here we have in the middle money. And we said money's always a big factor. Yes and no. Because I've seen agents leave and go to 100% brokerage where they make zero money because they didn't have the tools and support systems that they needed or they weren't able to generate business on their own. So it's not about the money as much as, I mean, the gross about the net, right? The net, what they put in their pocket at the end of the day. So on surveys, here are some things that agents always say that are important to them, the brand of the company. That is why big box companies are able to attract so many agents because they have worked hard to build a good brand. The culture, we talked about that module. Training, we'll go over that next. The location, this seems like a, an area that's maybe underestimated, but so many agents prefer to be close to their home or close to the area that they serve. Perks, right? Um, and we'll, we're going to talk about that this week and in our next module as well. And last is growth, which is promotion, believing in people, supporting them to get to the next level. And that's in module nine as well. So how do you help your agents put a system in place? You help them with their time blocking and their schedule. You help them because they're now accountable. There's somebody else looking over their shoulder, measuring their production, and holding their, them accountable. And lastly is the follow-up. And that's what you can do as a brokerage owner. It's really hard to be in business for yourself because there's very little accountability, but you can provide that piece for them to help them be successful. You can fill their pipelines with leads. How many leads do you want to provide at what level? What processes do you have in place? How much is it going to cost you to provide these leads? And how much will it profit you? Hopefully the profit will be more than the cost or the revenue will be more than the cost leading to a profit, right? And one of the most important things, how will you distribute your leads among your agents? Will that be a sore spot if agents feel that you're favoring some over others and giving them more leads? And lastly, what about assessing your customer or agent demand? The bottom line is that culture is key. Culture is one of the most important things that you can bring to your company that you can build that helps your agents stay because they feel like they're family, they feel like they're valued, and you believe in them, and everybody needs somebody to believe in them, right? Teamwork makes the dream work. How important is it to have that spirit of collaboration? Yes, we're competitors, but we can collaborate as well. And that's really what people want is a sense of belonging, knowing that they're making a difference. Now, of course, there are some issues that happen among agents. And we sometimes refer to that as drama. Um, and a lot of it has to do with the group dynamics, the group dynamics of your agents working together, of them working with other companies, other brokerages, or could be them working with you and taking direction from you as their supervisor, which legally we are their supervisor according to our, um, according to our um, state licensing, right? So with the group dynamics, you want to explore internal teamwork challenges and make sure that you have a spirit of collaboration and competition I'm sorry, and cooperation along with that competition. Make sure it's not just, you know, dog eat dog because then it becomes backstabbing, backbiting, tattletelling, sabotaging, and that's really not productive to anybody when they're spending their time like that. And for as a brokerage, we really just don't want that headache, right? 
So we need to have a system or a way to address interpersonal conflicts, to resolve them, and have some types of steps that we go through, which again we'll be discussing that on our Module 10. The important thing is to make sure you keep the right team members. Invest in your agents as individuals. Be open and transparent. That's so important in today's business environment. When they give you feedback, take the time to listen and respond to it. Even if you don't implement their exact, su exact suggestions, it lets them know that they're valued and their voice is important. And if people feel that they're not valued, if they feel their voice is not being listened to, then they will be quick to leave and jet out that door. Most importantly, lead by example. Be a good role model of what you expect to see at your brokerage and continue developing their strengths, building them up, helping them get to the next level so they don't become bored or stale. And again, that is in our module nine training that we'll cover next time. All right, our last one here is supporting your agents. How do you support them in meeting their goals? Well, you help them meet their goals, not yours. This might sound counterintuitive to what we've already discussed, but because we talked about crunching the numbers, making sure the agents are contributing, checking their profitability. So yes, they do need to meet your, your company-wide goals, but for them to succeed individually, you need to make sure that you support them at the highest level so that they can meet their goals, whatever their goals are. And how do you know what their goals are? Right, we showed you how to do that. When you very first hire them, you sit down with them, have a one-on-one -on -one conversation and ask them what their goals are. Not just production, not just money, but their life goals, their personal goals, because knowing that can help you be a better support. For example, you might have a mom on your team that has, you know, toddlers or school age children and says, my goal is to work part time and to have a flexible schedule so I can always be there for my children. I want to be able to take them to school. I want to pick them up. You know, I want to make sure that they're cared for and they have dinner at home every night. And so supporting her goal of not working full time, but still being productive and making a steady income is going to be important. So how can you help that agent working mom to do that? So whatever their goals are, right? So you want to be profitable immediately. I mean, sorry, not you don't want to, but you want to help them be profitable immediately because when a new agent joins you, that's the most important factor that gets them excited about your company and staying for the long term is knowing they can make profits right out of the gate. Help them earn more money annually or annually by knowing what competing brokerages are offering. We showed you how to do a net sheet right in a previous um, sample because a net sheet shows what the other agent brokerage or brokerages are offering them and what you would offer and how your company helps them be more profitable. Okay, help them accomplish their goals. We just talked about that. They do that through goal setting. And saving for retirement for the long haul, that's something that we don't often talk about in our real estate brokerages, but that is important to the agents and that helps them make the leap from uh, working at a full-time job to spending more time and eventually coming over full-time as an agent is being able to save for retirement. And lastly, work less and achieve more. You know, in our business, we are known for working lots and lots of hours, weekends, nights, holidays, on vacation, we're still working. Unless our cell phone doesn't have reception, we are working. So it's easy for agents to get to a point of burnout. And how do you help them to avoid that burnout by uh, working smarter, giving them the tools like maybe a transaction coordinator, an assistant, to be able to get things done. A mentoring program is so important to helping the agents succeed. So if you have an apprentice mentor program, what you can do is you can take seasoned pros and pair them with newbies. Of course, with the consent of both of them and some rules in place. 
If you have some rules in place, it makes it mutually beneficial so the seasoned pro doesn't feel like they're being taken advantage of and just used by a newbie who's going to take all their secrets and now go compete with them, right? So have a system in place. Office meetings. What better way to encourage your agents, train them, give them some of your value one-on-one -on -one mentoring time, but to have a great office meeting. Everyone has the opportunity to share, to voice their opinion, to uh, have a group forum where we can all be accountable to each other and to show transparency. So one thing that I find for office meetings to get people there is to ask them to play a role by presenting something. And that's how you make sure everybody participates. Guest speakers are great. Make sure you're bringing a lot of value. Don't just ramble on and on um, about what, what you want or you know what you see for the brokerage, but bring real value that helps them make money and create a culture of fun and environment that they want to come back to and that they enjoy coming to the office meetings. Also, make sure that you have some professional development available for them so that they can continually be challenged they can learn, they can, um, you know, have some type of um, achievement that they feel that they're moving towards. Having a professional development program in-house is a great recruiting tool as well. And it's something that you can incorporate into your regular office meetings every week. Last but not least, this is the fun part, the cash in hand. <laughs> offer incentives. You can offer cash bonuses. And besides cash, you can also offer lead distribution, an income stream, recognition. You can have distinctive team approaches or, um, you know, appreciation. You can help people achieve their life goals. That could be one of your incentives, like maybe time off or pay time off or something. Okay, so a lot of great things going on with incentives. Incentives basically put a carrot out there for people, it's something that they want to do, and also helps them achieve their goals. So any questions today? Any questions, Brokerage? Let me know. Go ahead and type into the little chat bar. Okay, don't forget. Masterclass for Brokerage Owners. If you're already a Brokerage Owner, take some time every week to work on your business. Put it into your schedule. Time block it out just like you're teaching your agents to do. Do the same thing for yourself. Block that time out. Protect that time and let Everybody know you're not available for two hours a week so you can work on your business. Take the time to go through our courses. Do the worksheets, right? Do the hard work and you will profit. You will prosper because you are taking yourself to the next level and you're putting in the work. Now, please stay tuned and join us for our next module next time, which is our ninth inning all about agent promotion. This is about how to take agents and promote them to the next level because agents, after a certain time, they're either going to get burned out, they're going to get bored, or they're going to want to start their own brokerage, which means leaving you. So how do you keep those great agents in-house by continuing to promote them and make them part of your leadership team? All right, Shakita said, no questions. Love the spreadsheet. Okay, awesome. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And recruit and retain top talent. Scout, sign, and play the right agents at your brokerage firm. This was Module 8. I hope that everybody has a wonderful week. I hope that you take some time to write out your list of your 30 agents and put together a plan, start working with them, start friending them on Facebook, start inviting them to coffee, invite them to your office, hold an event that gives you an excuse to reach out to these agents. The bottom line is 
always be recruiting, right? Woohoo! Who's excited about recruiting? Okay, with nothing else further, I will let everybody go. Thank you so much for joining us. Hope you have a great week. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.